forgot to do that the other day. So coffee, that's what we're talking about. But when we talk about Young Life Camps and coffee, this is an emerging idea over the last 10 years that has shown up at our camps because the trend in our culture has been coffee. And so it's shown up at camps. And right now we have 10 out of 18 camps with a coffee shop. And as I read through folks' five-year plans, it looks like we're gonna have three more uh, coming online in the next uh, two to four years. So the coffee shops are not a West Coast only thing, although that's where they started in our story. They are um, a great place, a great atmosphere to have a conversation. And it's so ingrained in our culture that to bring that place and that environment into our camp story um, has been really successful. When camp managers ask, should we build a coffee shop? What's the cost analysis? Is this worth doing? We have shown that within the first 18 months, you can pay back the cost of starting a coffee shop um, based on the revenue. So a successful um, operation. As we think about it from the terms of uh, the management, we ask you as some background to read through the coffee manual. There's a lot of details, a lot of best practices that we've captured in there that really are just more like a, um, a reference guide. So please take the time if you haven't to read through that. But our time today is gonna be more of you at 30,000 feet. Um, it's more about philosophy, some of the nuances and some pro tips. So if you just, if you, if you want to get into the, the deep granular uh, elements of coffee, please check out that uh, manual. We updated it this last year and it has uh, really current and relevant information. So that's my introduction, um, but let's dive in with knowing a little bit about 41 and Change. And Tammy, uh, why don't you start us off and tell us a little bit of why we serve 41 and Change and then we can transition into talking about some key tricks and tips. Was everybody able to watch those videos that were linked within the, the training manual that you guys got? Okay, if not, not, not a big deal, we'll talk about it. But I think it's a great thing to just go back and look for those links. It's right at the top, it says 41 and then 41 and change. They're only a couple minutes long. But it goes into why we use 41 and change. And that is because the where the beans come from is from one of our camps in Nicaragua. So we are helping send kids to camp in Nicaragua and here in the States. So we want to help support our own industry, really. But it's also when you look at the coffee industry across the board and where the beans come from, what they pay for the beans and who they're paying, we are way up there in the revenue that we're able to pay and the quality of our beans. So it's always great information. I think a lot of the coffee shops have this information on some flyers that you can read up on. And even if people ask about it, as they're ordering their coffees, you've got the knowledge that you can share with them. So the gist of it is we're serving our own coffee, which is huge because then it does help every kid hear about Jesus. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just jump in and add a thing. Um, not only does the coffee farm exist on Vita Hoven, the, the camp in Nicaragua, but they also are hiring folks from the community and are able to pay them 25% more than um, the local wage. So you've got a coffee with a great story, a great purpose. And I also appreciate that they have crafted a high quality coffee. So we should feel very proud that we get to serve 41 and change and be part of quality coffee, but also a great story. And because we're about kids coming to camp and encountering Jesus, this is one way that we can participate in that. So it is a national standard um, in Young Life camping that we would serve 41 and change. In your manual, there's all the details on how to order. Tammy, what was your, there's there's a timing element. What was your timing rhythm with coffee? Um, again, you wanna 
take in consideration your location because that's going to factor in. If you're all the way on the East Coast, it's going to take longer to get to you. But either order on a Saturday, just go into the website and order because then they're going to turn and ship it on Monday, Tuesday. But if you order after Thursday, it will ship the following week. So just you've kind of got to the earlier on or later in the week know that the following week is going to ship. So if you're on the East Coast and you order on a Friday, it'll be another week before you get it because of the transit time. Great, good, good stuff. Also, as you're training summer staff, I would encourage you to invite them into this. You know, we talked a little bit on our last call about all the summer staff arrive at the same time, it seems like. And so this is a great thing to set your barista summer staff uh, intern, I'm not intern, summer staff loose on, is give them the website to watch the 41 videos as part of their introduction and training. We really do want our summer staff to be able to communicate the story and the reason um, of 41. We also keep uh, some marketing elements, whether it's some um, the tents or the little placards by the register. And just so you know, we've been using the 41 and change coffee sleeves. None of us have liked the sleeve itself. And so we're actually working on a new and improved one that you can co-brand your coffee shop name and 41. So more on that will be coming out soon. Uh, but do invite your interns and summer staff into knowing about 41. That, that's a great training thing to add. All right, well, let's move into some tricks and tips. Tammy, why don't you start us off uh, sharing some of those that are listed and elaborate on those and then add any of the ones you found. Well, <laughs> one, I love coffee, so I could talk about it for quite a while. So, I mean, if anybody has questions, always reach out to other people and ask away. But tips and tricks, one is definitely look through this manual there's been a lot of time and effort put into it. So a lot of stuff can be found in there. Um, and honestly, it's just working with coffee. You get to know it more. You get to hear, figure out the sounds that it's making and you know when something's wrong or right. Um, so just play with it. Um, you only get better if you haven't been around it a lot. So um I guess I would just say, does, or ask, does anybody have any questions that I can answer about tips and tricks? And it can be anything. Okay, I guess my main thing that I always teach people is have your milk ready. Because that takes the longest and that is, yes, coffee, people go for the caffeine part of it, but if they're making a latte, that is, the most important thing to have ready to go. And that also helps keep your line moving. So I always put my most experienced person steaming milk because you've got to be able to look down the line, see what's coming and have that milk ready. And we will pre-steam milk knowing if it's a men's group, we'll do, if you do 2% or whole percent, we'll have a pitcher ready to go. So we're just getting milk into the, Cups so that the shots can go in because you don't want your shots to be sitting long and then it just kind of helps move that line through so you're not getting backed up. And then the other one, my main tip or trick is knowing where to order from. Just have that ready, have those favorites saved on your computer so that you're just going in and hitting that uh, one thing we found is Barista Underground is a great website to go to just to look around, see what they've got, but they also carry Oatly Oat Milk, which is right now, I believe one of the only ones that's certified gluten-free. I think some of the other ones are coming out that way, but that's also the one brand that Starbucks is serving now. So their orders are a little backlogged, but if you've got the time to wait for it to get there, order it because they also have free shipping. And you can order your almond milk from there too. So just poke around on the websites. And as you look through the manual, there's websites listed, poke around on those as well. Great. Well, we're going to tag team back and forth. I'm going to share my screen um, and share with you um, the, well, I thought I was, thought I had it pulled up, is the uh, cost analysis 
tool. Uh, this is very similar to um, the cost analysis in our snack bars. So let me see if it won't reset and share. Show all windows. There it is. All right, give me a thumbs up when you see this on your screen. Awesome, okay. Very similar to last uh, cost analysis tool we looked at, but every year you're gonna start with this uh, tab called supplier list. Keep in mind, this is your shopping list. Uh, you see that US Foods and 41 and Change are our two key vendors. Um, so you, save this as a copy on your desktop and you add and delete the things that you're using at the coffee shop that you're managing um, and you'll notice uh, even if it can go down here farther you should see websterant is another vendor that we use seattle coffee gear barista pro shop ecolab and frankie if you have the frankie automatic machine which is the recommendation moving forward for an espresso machine so just just note if you're in that market make sure we we talk um, but every year you're going to update this column in blue note that everything here is already formulated for you and that will then filter into the next tab which is the cost analysis so it will already populate this column e for you with all the prices on espresso and milk and then there's formulas based in here that will go ahead and calculate your retail your profit margin your profit uh, be sure to set your tax wherever you know whatever your tax rate at your location is and then there's one more tab in addition on this one and that is the syrup flavor list so this is a place of uh of a lot of trend this this is where just like trends show up in our stores trends show up in the coffee shop in the syrups we've listed here the top 20 um just to give you a you know a place to start if you don't have some of these notice we've got a couple categories here one is seasonal uh, pumpkin spice does not really sell well in the summer, so don't need to carry that in July, but probably should carry it if you have groups in October, for example. Sugar-free options, fruity options, more common options, and then you also see uh, the big train uh, as well. So a lot of those blended drinks that we serve. So all of this, again, is saved in the manual with also an instruction page on the very first tab that walks you through. And then this last tab walks you through the construction based on the drink. So just gives you a little bit more information. So every March, this we just cost analysis and concessions in coffee, uh, in crafts. So that's just a task that we typically do in March. So I'm gonna pause. Any questions about how to complete a cost analysis? You guys got that all figured out. I love that, you know, when we price something in the store, we're pricing the cost of the t-shirt, which is very straightforward. But when we're pricing a food item, we have to factor in not only all the ingredients used to make that item, but also what we serve it. So the straw, the plate, the cup, the lid, all of that. So just make sure you're doing your due diligence so that you really can hit those profit margin goals. So that's my update. Back, I'm going to throw it back to you, Tammy. What are some other tricks and tips? Every region is different. So one, since we have two Colorados on here and kind of a Midwest, um, there will be some differences between you guys. But I would say starting with like Colorado and going West, they're definitely more like espresso flavored stuff. They don't like super sweet where you, once you start going Midwest to the East, you know, those trends can change where they may want something sweeter versus a heavier coffee flavor. So, and it's just knowing, but kids are kids and you'd be surprised. They're used to going to Starbucks with their parents. And so they'll come in and little boys will order. Yeah, I want a cappuccino. <laughs> and we'll look at them and be like, you know what that is? Yeah, yeah, I want that. And so we'll give it, they'll order it. And then they'll come back like, this isn't sweet enough. So, I mean, we'll, We'll add more to it for them, but sometimes they just don't know what they're ordering without their parents there. So um, 
you'll have that. And then on weekends, depending on weekends for school camping, your women's group will go through a lot of alternative milk. Your men's group will go through a lot of white mocha and Americano. So it's just random different trends. Most often they continue every year. So, but as trends come out in the market, like Starbucks, be watching what Starbucks is doing and those things happen. But lately, I mean, they've been behind on that oat milk. So they didn't bring that in until recently, but we've already been on top of that one. So you never, other ran smaller coffee shops might already be on some of those trends, but I wouldn't say just because Starbucks is having a trend that you need to go out and buy all those syrup flavors that they carry, they change those out yearly. So you just don't want to overload your counter space with all of that stuff. I would just say stick with the top 20 and a few randoms that come in. Great, great. Well, another thing to add to tricks and tips is the environment of our coffee shops has shown to be a big impact. We've had a couple locations that have brought coffee into their snack bar and then the space around it is maybe loud or super bright and has really lacked on the environment. So if you have the opportunity to put a coffee shop in really prioritize the environment that you're creating. Now let's talk about some ways that you do that. You do that with lighting, with seating, both comfortable seating like a overstuffed leather chair, uh, tables set in twos and fours, but not necessarily bigger tables. Uh, you wanna consider music and the atmosphere that music can create in the space and then design and, and decor. So having the coffee shop have a sense of place has proven to be really, really um, influential of sales. Some of the locations that stand out in my mind are Timberwolf and Lost Canyon have really created great coffee shop spaces that really, in, you know, kids go to those places. They want to be in the place and then they want to have a great cup of coffee that they really can enjoy with someone. Um, so environment, environment is really critical. Angela, for you, that will be a challenge for a while because it's in the catch-all room. Uh, let's see, game room, dining hall, like I don't know how many things are actually in that space. So that's gonna be challenging. So, all right, well, another thing, another tip that I will pass along to you is hours of operation. Most often folks will open their coffee shop before breakfast and that's it. Some will open in the afternoon as well or at certain days during the week, but be mindful as the manager who's scheduling your team. If you have someone who's starting their day, let's say at six o'clock and that same person is running the snack bar and ending the snack bar that closes at 11 or midnight, you've got an incredibly long day. So be thoughtful as you bring in a coffee shop, how you're scheduling people to do that. Now, Tammy, how, how did you navigate that at the ranch? I would rotate, so all of my retail summer staff are trained on espresso. So it's not always the snack bar crew that are in for every shift. So I would go every other day. And when we had night openings, it would just depend on who was working because sometimes the assignment team would come in on one of those nights. So then it always had to be interns or myself and specialists working the registers while they're making all the treats. But um, we don't typically run espresso at night, but if you do, you're going to want to kind of shuffle your staffing around. So if one day, day two, it would be the snack bar that opened the espresso. And then day three, it would be the store crew that ran espresso and vice versa. So it just went back and forth. So you're kind of leveling out that whole long shift. So one day the store will have a long shift. The next day, the snack bar will have a longer shift. That's great. At Saranac, one of the strategies I use is I created a team, you know, I called the retail team. And then I would say you're assigned to certain spots, but we all do certain things together. And that included family time and then taking a shift at the evening in concessions. And so I would rotate one summer staff from crafts or the store into the evening snack bar rotation um, so that some, some nights, even the, the snack bar summer staff weren't on every single night. 
so it was a it, it was a way to kind of cycle folks in but you have to be creative because that the day in retail can start early and end very very late Something i would came. just add that um look at the sales histories of coffee shops in the evening too um just so that you're not sitting there with nobody coming in and that have those conversations with guest services and your camp manager too. But some, I mean, some groups, it's absolutely worth it. That's awesome. I would say middle schoolers, probably not so much, mm -hmm. but yeah. We also had one coffee shop that changed their menu for their evening openings. They had a great space. They wanted the space to be open, but they offered more decaf options and more non-caffeine options in their coffee shop in the evening. So just know that you can play with that menu. Speaking of menu, let's talk about three things that you should consider when putting a menu together. You should consider best sellers. You should consider trends. And you should consider seasonality. So for example, on the seasonality, in the summer, make sure you have iced beverages. Make sure in the winter you have some holiday flavors like we've talked about pumpkin spice or peppermint around Christmas time or hot chocolate uh, with a peppermint stick in it, things like that. So think seasonality. Um, best sellers, it's a great way with Square. You can run your best sellers now. We, and as a coffee impact team, we've talked about that, our coffee impact team helps us with this. Um, they help keep us informed about trends. In fact, they're the ones that brought oak milk to our attention about a year or so ago. And there's already a couple trends we're watching uh, to see if they really get traction in the market. So when you're working on your menu, think about those three things. And like in all retail areas, we follow the good, better, best philosophy. So step back as you've done your cost analysis and make sure you feel like you've got something that's really low cost that a kid can come up to the counter and get something for a dollar, dollar fifty, but all the way up to Tammy, what was your highest priced beverage? It would probably be four dollars on up. And that's when you're getting kind of the white mocha with extra shots the the large the 20 ounce so our coffee shops tend to be lower than starbucks which people are always shocked with and it you know that's the purpose of it we're we're still making a profit but we're not gouging awesome all right and then my last trick or tip i want you to write down these three fractions for me <clears throat> the first one i want you to write down is 12 and a half the next one is 16 and two thirds. And finally, the last one is 20 and three fourths. Now this is just a, a, a way to remind that a 12 ounce cup of coffee gets one shot of espresso and two pumps of syrup. Whereas a 16 ounce drink is gonna get two shots of espresso, three shots of syrup, and then you can continue on. A 20 ounce is gonna get three shots of espresso, four shots. I will say in the West Coast, you you can sometimes decrease your syrup on that denominator, Tammy, right? Uh, no, I would stay right about that one if we're staying with the trends and where Starbucks is. Starbucks will run sweeter than this. Gotcha. So we acknowledge that you will often get summer staff in that will build creative new drinks, but this is the framework that we want to follow when we're building uh, a new drink. Um, uh, I can't think of off. I, I had some this morning, and they're all run. Up, they've all left my mind. But you will create some unique drinks at your location as long as you've done your cost analysis and stay with this framework of the ratio of ounces to espresso shots to syrup, then you've really got the basis of a great drink. So uh, there's flexibility and creativity in our coffee shops. All right, Tammy, anything else? And then let's open it up for some questions. I would just say, as you look through the manual and sticking with how Kathleen lay, listed out the sizes of the cups, the shots and the syrups, stick to that because we want to make our recipes across the board the same because we do share guests and campers that go different places and so that if we're all the same they're getting the same service 
and quality of drink. So as you go through, look through that, the coffee manual, you know, there's all those, uh, the recipe cards that are in there and then the little guides. When I first started, those guides are awesome and amazing to yep. look at. And I keep one in, well, actually they're both in our coffee shop so that if somebody needs a quick reference, all they have to do is look up above the machine or down below. It just depends on where you have located. And we've got the shots listed for the size and how many pumps and just very basic stuff. Like this is an Americano, water and shots. And then here's the layering for a latte. So really quick, easy to look at. Um, but everybody just learns their different ticks, tricks, not ticks, even though those are bad right now, <laughs> tips and tricks to coffee. But it's each location is different. But yeah, look at that manual. There's so much good stuff in there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Which I'll piggyback on that. I just showed you that image that she's talking about from the manual. I would encourage you, we actually laid it out in such a way that you can print those off, laminate them, cut them out and put them on a ring that you can keep as a reference guide, especially as you're training weekend wranglers who might have a little understanding about coffee, but there's a heavy training load when bringing in folks for a weekend. So having those cards on hand is really helpful. And then if you're anything like me, who I, I wasn't running the coffee shop consistently, so I would come in and I would pause like now a mocha, mocha, mocha. That's how much of that, you know, chocolate sauce, how much am I putting in? The recipe card was just there and I could reference it. Um, so great, uh, great use of the manual that way. Yeah. And it, I would say also, if they're visual learners, even in the manual, you know, we've got these pictures so that they can look at or you can look at um, as well. So everybody learns differently. Yep. So true. All right. Well, let's pause and open it up to some questions. You guys have been running coffee shops. You've been opening it up to customers. What would you say are some of your experiences and or what are your questions? So let's just open it up for a conversation. I just have a question for y'all's creative opinions. Um, so Kathleen, when you said a hot chocolate with a peppermint stick, so we have a Christmas night here at Trail West. So this year we're opening the um, snack bar and the coffee shop for like an hour during that night and only offering Christmas themed things. So we're doing like sugar cookie decorating kits and the snack bar, like just fun little things. And so we're trying to brainstorm Christmas coffee drinks. So hot chocolate with peppermint stick will now definitely be on our menu. Um, but what are some other creative Christmas drinks that y'all can think of? I would just have the peppermint syrup there because that can go into everything. Your white mocha, your mocha, your Americano. Uh, I would also say eggnog, but I don't think you can find that right now unless your kitchen yeah. wants to make it for you. Okay. Um, right. As a holiday thing. So. I would also say, you know, red and green sprinkles go a long way for dressing up a drink. You know, we, th we talked about merchandising yesterday. You can merchandise your drinks with sweet cold foam that's peppermint flavored. You can do um, sprinkles on the top of your whipped cream, a little, you know, peppermint stick or candy cane that you get at a low cost. Yeah, so there's some merchandising to your drinks and also how you name them. There could be a drink of the night that's yeah. got uh, a cute name to it as well, so. Okay, cool. Oh, that's fun, Christmas in July. Yeah. <laughs> but <Andrew> one, <laughs> why don't you and Ben tell us a little bit about the coffee shop at uh, the Gold Bricks at Trail West. If, if, if my memory is right, it's right there in the lobby uh, family room area. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, we're actually sitting right here. So I'll, we'll uh, stand up and Tour. show you. Um, okay, so here's our lobby at Trail West. So that red barn thing over there is our snack bar. So every, all of our retail locations are actually like within 20 feet of each other. That right there is our store behind the trash can. Um, there's our front door to the lodge. 
and then here's our coffee shop. So everything is like right here. So kind of when you're talking about creating an environment, that's a hard thing for us because there's 50 guests in here screaming all the time, you know? So it's super fun, but it's hard to create like a coffee shop environment. Um, okay, I'm walking backwards towards yeah. it. Great, great uh, uh, physical presence. Like there's no one at Trail West who's not gonna know where the coffee shop is. You've got great visibility and fantastic signage. I, I really love what's happening with your signage. Yeah, so we have these little things here that are just plexiglass and we use um, dry erase markers on them. And I always just write like, welcome to whatever group it is and the coffee shop hours. Um, and then on this, in the summer, this will change to like the drink of the day, the barista's choice or whatever. Um, yeah, so it's pretty simple. It's very small, we have space for like maybe two people back there. Um, but we only have one person usually working the coffee shop at once. Okay, one person. Do, what kind of machine do you have to run Espresso through? That is a great question. It actually, so our old camp manager, Charlie Chup, had he, his family put Starbucks into every single Safeway, whatever, all the grocery stores. And so we have most like his load king stuff so honestly i don't even know what it is but it's pretty fancy look at that it's that. yeah that's nice so it's kind of what's in a lot of starbucks from a few years ago that are like located in shopping centers and stuff mm -hmm. not like standalone starbucks but the ones that are put into grocery stores nice so. And Sutton, what's, what's some of the top ordered drinks at Gold Bricks there? Ben, um, Americanos. Lattes are very popular. Yeah. Cappuccino is very popular. Dirty chais are very popular. Yeah. Mm. Um, I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, we sell a lot of chai. Interesting. Interesting. We also did, a, so we've always used a different chai than I feel like what every single other camp uses. So finally I was like, we're gonna do a chai taste test. So we did that last week and brought all of our staff in and um, it was unanimous that the big train powder chai was the one. Oh my, well, pro tip, let's add that to the list. <laughs> so okay. it was, The only uh, thing that I would put in there about the powder versus like the liquid chai is the liquid doesn't have dairy in it. And most um, powders have dairy in it. Yeah, we should look at ours and see. Um, and I don't remember Big Train's ingredient list, but it is good stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's a great point, Tammy, because um, our coffee spaces, we do need to know what is dairy, what has a dairy component as we are more attuned to our guest allergy needs. Usually it's a, it's a dairy allergy when we hit the coffee shop. So that's a great thing to know with our ingredients because you'll get asked. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that oak milk has oak milk has gotten enough attention that it really has provided a great on trend milk option, but it's also certified non dairy. So well, thanks for that tour. I'm, I'm, Angel, what about you? Tell us, just elaborate a little bit more about Sunny's and what you're doing in the coffee shop. And then if you have questions. Yeah, well also Sutton, I was I was thinking about this when you're talking, I love Christmas. And so when you said that, I was, I got really excited. <laughs> but I was even thinking like, you could have the summer staff or whoever's working that shift to wear like a Santa hat or things like that, like that it just makes it fun when they're ordering that kids would love it, families would love it. And it just seems like a fun little thing to do. Um, you know, you're right. And Ben actually works that night because it's intern night and I'm an intern coordinator. And we also have a Buddy the Elf costume at Trail West Lodge. So that's kind of potentially on the table. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Ben's like, awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I mean, it also makes me think you could change your music as well to hit the theme. Again, creating atmosphere. All right, Angela, tell us about Sunny's. Um, yeah, so our space is kind of similar to your set in, in that it is where the dining hall is, the club room, the store is just on the other side of the building. Um, and then the, the kitchen is right behind us. And so it all kind of, it's hard to set the atmosphere or like the music, because there's usually a lot of different music going on in that same area. So like little things that play into the environment, like the lighting, the seating, like there's just so much we can do right now. And so that's kind of what the space looks like around it. Um, I'm getting a feel still for how to make drinks and getting familiar with everything. But I'm also really glad you mentioned that Sutton about the chai because I've also kind of been thinking if there's a different chai people use that may taste a little better. Um, so I'll also look into that. So glad you mentioned that. Um, it's pretty small. So I think just trying to make the space as cozy as possible. Um, but the menu is, I'm going with simple this summer. <laughs> of like, let's keep it simple and straight to the point, like what are the top sellers? And so I think um, like Trail West, lattes, um, cappuccinos, those things are just the famous ones. And so that's kind of what I'm sticking with is simple and sweet and warm is what I'm trying to go for. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point, Angela, when you talk about menu strategy, our menu should be a menu that we can execute well. You know, we can have the menu of our dreams, but if the line is wrapped around and people are waiting too long to get their order after they have placed it, uh, that's not a great customer experience. So, you know, creating a menu that's, you know, profitable and has range and all the things we've talked about, but that we can execute within the timing and within our staffing profile, very important. Um, Angela, I'd love to dream with you a little bit. Um, I had thought for a while about having the entrance to the coffee shop be the back door so that it had a unique entry and maybe even curtain off the rest of the dining hall and maybe even work with your kitchen staff about these operating hours, here's our playlist. Um, maybe even going as far as putting some branding on the glass door that matches whatever branding you have for your coffee shop. Maybe even some cafe tables outside that door with some umbrellas that give it atmosphere and a sense of, I'm in, I'm in a place. Because um, I would, I would, <laughs> I would agree with you. If there was a harder place to pull this off, it's yours, um, because it's trying to truly be. It's in a multi-purpose building, which is the club room, the game room, the the dining hall. It's trying to do a lot in that space. Um, so, good stuff. All right. I love that idea. I, with the pool table also, there's like the clanging of the, like the pool table balls and it's like middle school kids and it's, it's just really loud in there, which is well, great, you know, but it also makes it really hard. The, the, the pool balls could disappear during coffee hours. They, they just, the balls just might need to go in a bucket somewhere, you know, just to create a quieter atmosphere or let the music really create the space. So there's definitely some challenges that you're encountering. All right, Frontier, tell us a little bit about your space and then what questions did we not cover that we can answer? Um, yeah, so our space, uh, we um, we have a, um, a cabin on camp called Black Elk and we took the lobby of that cabin and turned it into a, a coffee shop area. And over the course, it took a couple of years to kind of get it to a place where I feel like it's a pretty nice space. It's got some nice comfy couches or it's around the fireplace with some two tops and a couple four tops for people and, and pretty spacious. Um, and yeah, so I, I kind of like the space of it. Uh, the, the atmosphere is good. Uh, right now we're, we, because we just kind of became seasonal this past year, we, we went to turn our coffee machine on back in April and found out it wasn't working and needed to be kind of refurbished. So we sent it to the shop. So right now we're without a coffee shop and without a grind or not without, without a coffee machine and without a grinder. So we haven't really done anything yet and are hoping to get that back soon and uh, to get some practice in before summer starts. 
<laughs> and get it up and running at some point. So um, yeah, Grace, anything to add about that? I don't think so. I think it is like a really, I think Frontier has a really great space to create that as an atmosphere, like a coffee shop. Um, definitely when I, whenever I took like kids here or whatnot, whatnot, it was like perfect to like, just get a drink, have like some quiet time with kids or like a conversation. So um, I think it's a sweet space um, for ministry here. I could not agree with you more. It is a fantastic space. And thank you for reminding me one thing I forgot to mention on my notes, and that is one of the keys to running a coffee shop is quality equipment maintenance. Uh, the machines that we use require regular expert yeah. maintenance. Um, it's often something we cannot do ourselves. We need to have a local technician that comes in and calibrates our machines and adjusts our grinders. If you have an automatic machine that does the grinding for you, it needs regular maintenance. So whatever machine you have, there is some maintenance guidance in the manual, but know your machine, know what it needs and make sure you schedule. Um, Angela, we were talking about this the other day where all ready to make it work, but it needed attention. <laughs> um, so, um, and, and Tammy, correct me if I'm wrong, not only are you doing regular daily cleaning and minor maintenance on your machine, but you're doing seasonal maintenance. How often were you doing that for your- It your depends. Work? It depends on the machine. I mean, yes, you wanna do daily cleaning, but also looking at the manual for like the descaling that happens because everybody here has a different machine. I think Sutton's is almost like a pill that gets dropped in on the top. And then at Frontier, that it goes into the pucks to descale. It's a, a solution. Uh, sorry, the porta filters because you have a La Marzocco. And then it's almost the same thing for Angela as well. So everybody's different. Um, and I happen to know exactly all the machines that you guys have because I've seen them all or worked on them or have owned them currently. Uh, so the older, more manual machines from my tech is we take it in every other year for servicing for them to go in and descale the boilers. That's something that you cannot do. That has to be done by a tech. And the reason behind that is we, yes, we run coffee shops, but we're not running like a Starbucks where they're open every day and just constantly running coffee. But that's a conversation to have with your techs on how often they feel that that machine needs to come in to be serviced or if they're coming out and servicing them. So yeah, you've got your daily, your weekly, but really that descaling, the cleaning of the porta filters should be happening on a daily basis. And that is more of a training. So once you know how to do that, I would train your intern. Don't train summer staff to clean those machines. And your grinders, if you have the separate grinder, can be dangerous. So you would just always want to make sure it's unplugged before getting in and cleaning out those burrs. Yeah, good word. All right. Well, that's all the content that we had listed to cover. So um, unless there's other questions, what I'd love for you guys to do is go to the chat feature and come up with a hashtag that uh, summarizes one takeaway that you have from our conversation around coffee. I'll share those and then we'll wrap up a little early. So And one other thing, I liked how Angela had talked about going simple. Always reevaluate your menus. Um, if you've got too much going on, go ahead and take a flavor away. You don't need to have everything, but you do want your top flavors in there. And your, your blended drinks, you know, consider all of that stuff. And if you're going through a lot of blended drinks, if, put into your budget to get one of the silencers that can go with that to cut down on the noise. All right, environment, hashtag environment, hashtag buddy the elf, perfect. Hashtag simple menu, that's fantastic. 
hashtag clean often and love a latte hashtag atmosphere well great job guys thanks for this conversation the around coffee um, our next module will be at one o'clock central time and we'll be talking about reports both financial reports and um, reports out of square we will also open it up for the last 30 minutes for just any question goes with a couple of retail managers joining us so come thinking about what what did we not cover these last 10 modules um, and what do you still need to know some more about so with that see you guys later today thank you thanks y'all